I'm Porter William, and I've been entertaining, event planning, and cooking for over 25 years. Finally, I get to share my secrets with you. No matter if you have a one-room apartment or a grand-scale estate, we'll learn how to entertain from San Francisco to the beaches of Spain, from menu planning to tablescapes, I'll teach you how to entertain from the heart. From a memory, make a memory. Join me as we entertain the world one table at a time, next on Entertaining People. Hi and welcome to Entertaining People. I'm Porter William and today we're having a paella party. We're bringing the spirit of the Western Mediterranean right here to San Francisco and it's gonna be absolutely a fantastic afternoon. Let's start by telling you about our ingredients. We're having an alfresco afternoon and we're gonna start with what I call actually uh, my papa's paella. We've got a beautiful seafood mix, some saffron, some wonderful shrimp, dried mustard, uh, red chili flakes, some sugar, of course my gray salt, I'm never without the salt, and we're actually going to be using a pre-mixed saffron rice, which makes your life very, very easy, some sage, and some wonderfully, wonderfully sautéed roasted fresh pinoles, pine nuts, which is great. Also, of course, we've got to have our onions, and we'll be having some lovely sautéed chicken thighs and some chorizo, which is a sausage which is either available in pork or beef, we're actually using the pork. It's gonna bring a wonderful, wonderful flavor to it. So we're gonna start by putting our onions into a saute pan with butter. Our onions in the pan with a cube of butter, we're starting to saute them. Again, we're gonna look for that translucent, wonderful color that we've done so many times when we caramelize onions. We're not gonna go quite as far. And while those are cooking, I'll leave that there, I wanna show you a true paella pan. A paella pan is actually a specific vessel and it has a shape to it like this. This is actually my paella pan, that's why there's been a whole lot of love, but it's kind of a bit of an oven. And so we'll actually put the top on this and we'll cook it in the oven. It's its own vessel. Now today we're cooking for a larger group, so I'm gonna do basically the entire recipe in a larger pan and I'm gonna put it in a casserole and I'll be covering it with foil, cooking it the same way, which you can do too at home. If you don't have a paella pan, use any type of casserole pan, even a large skillet, cover it with foil and then we'll be baking it from there. So the next thing we need to do is to get started with actually preparing our chicken and our chorizo, our meats. And you know what I always love to do? You know how I am about working with old things. This chopping block, it's a fantastic, probably about 120 year old block. It's actually from Paris and I love this. And the first thing I'm gonna do with a fresh and clean knife and on the special side of the block right here is I'm just simply gonna cut up our chicken into bite-sized pieces, a little bit bigger because you want people to see it. This is a rice dish, it's like a big, huge casserole. And in fact, I call this uh, Papa's paella. And the reason why I do that is uh, there's a funny story about my dad and I. I got to uh, accompany him once on a business trip actually to the south of France and I said I always wanted to have paella and he was being such a good dad and we got to a taxi cab. We were so lost. We were in a little town called Cagsur-Mer and um, we, the whole, we were trying to translate to the cab driver, find us a place for paella. Well, anyways, the long story gets shorter. We ended up on this incredible beachfront restaurant on the Mediterranean. My dad and I had a table for two. The sun went down over the coast of the Mediterranean, the south of France, Italy in the distance, Spain on the other side, and actually it was one of the best memories I have of my dad and I ever being together. So for years I made paella and for years I tried to find paella, but now I just make it quick and simple and easy and I call it my papa's paella. So I guess it's porter and papa's paella. So we've got our chicken ready and I'm gonna take this over and I'm gonna add this to our onions. And I'm gonna switch chopping blocks for safety and knives. And the next thing we'll do is just cut up our chorizo. And again, chorizo does come in a casing, so it's very simple. You're just actually just gonna pull it out of the casing. Some people do it in, but I like it out. And I think as far as entertaining and with guests, it makes sense just to take the questionable things out of the mix. So we'll set that aside and we just want really nice healthy chunks because this is all going to break down and this is really going to be the major fat in the dish. So again, paella can be cooked with either just pure seafood, pure meat, or a mixture of seafood and meat. And that's what I'm doing today is because I've got a mixture of people. So I'm going to add the chorizo right into my skillet and stir that up so you can see how those colors are starting to come out of there. Let's let that saute. You want to be on a high heat. And I'm going to add the rest of my meat that I had prepared before you came to visit today. 
just chunk that up. Don't let any of those guys give you a hard time, just get in there. You know, one of the things about cooking, especially if you're inexperienced or if you're just not confident about the dish, the key is to cook what you know. And that's really what entertaining people is all about. My philosophy is that if you cook what you know and what you love to eat, then it really isn't difficult. Cook something that reminds you of a family member or a special occasion or a recipe that was given to you years ago or something that you do many, many times throughout the year. When you entertain, it's not the time to take a risk and the chances are it's not gonna come out. So just cook what you know. People are gonna love it because it comes from your heart. Today, I just feel like having some paella and so we're gonna cook paella. It's, it's that simple and we're gonna do some things that make it really easy. So while we have the meats going on one side, I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, paella pan going and I'm gonna add some butter and I'm also gonna add the rice. And what we're gonna be doing here is just pre-sauteing the rice so that it gets nice and covered in olive oil and just, it just kinda fast forwards the cooking just a little bit. And if you're doing this with whole rice or a mix, it works the same way. Just substitute olive oil for the butter in the mix and it'll work out just perfectly. Grab a spoon and we're just gonna wanna just cook that up and you'll be able to see the colors Listen, isn't that great? Look at that yellow. That is the color of the Mediterranean. Saffron, that beautiful, rare spice that is just so wonderful. So we're gonna let that just sit there and simmer, and I'm gonna come back and get a few spices that are gonna go into this. Of course, we just talked about the saffron. These incredible, rare, beautiful little centers of the crocus flower, which of course is the most expensive spice in the world. But you know, nowadays it's available at most chain uh, supermarkets and it really is fantastic. So I'm gonna sprinkle this with some saffron threads, which is really not only gonna bring a flavor, but a color, a deep red color, like a terracotta tile that you might see somewhere. I like to add a pinch of dry mustard in mine just a little bit. And then of course, our red chili flakes. This is the fire. You can always add it back in. Go a little light to start and then finish it up. We'll set those aside. And a little bit of sage. It's kind of a bit of a different twist. I like a, a bit of a fragrance in my paella and we're gonna hit it with our ground pepper. That should do it. And let's go back. Look in here, do you see all that on the bottom? That is flavor. So, you noticed how I didn't stir it, I let it brown. We want all those bits and pieces to come up in just a minute when we're gonna actually do what's called deglazing, and that's where we add a cold liquid to a hot skillet, and all of that flavor is gonna come up wonderfully. My dad was so funny that night, I tell you, we were sitting there, and uh, uh, when it comes to entertaining, that's one thing, but when it comes to eating out, asking for a table for two for you and your pop is like, they look at you like you're crazy because they wanted to give the table for two to the honeymooners that was out on the beach, but my dad and I insisted that we wanted that table. We were sitting in the sand, actually, on the Mediterranean and waiting for our paella, and you know, Ask for what you want, especially when it comes to entertaining and especially when you're going out. Let them know it's a special occasion. Let them know it's your only night with that person and hopefully they'll just bump you to a better table. But you know what? You get what you ask for and you have to be polite and you have to be nice and you have to understand that they're working. So talk to the maitre d', talk to the people and if you eye spy a table, ask for the table. And if you need to wait an extra hour, wait an extra hour. Make it easy on them. That's one of the greatest things about making an experience really a memory. Okay, so now I'm looking over my shoulder. We're gonna start with add our seafood. Just a second here. This is ready for deglazing. And I've got a couple cups of organic chicken broth. Use whatever you want. Can you hear that coming up there? Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna fill that up. And now I'm scraping all of those flavors off the bottom of that pan. Ah. Oh. If you've got a fan, make sure you turn it on because this is when it really gets fun right here. There's nothing like cooking. I can't wait to see the people who are coming today. Actually, a few of them I haven't seen in ages and some of them are regular friends, but being outside and eating outside is just one of my, my favorite things to do. I grew up in the West, so life without a barbecue and a backyard table, just, you know, I just can't really imagine that. So that's, that's gonna bring that back to a boil. You see again, our rice is coming up. Very easily, you see how that's browning there? Make sure you're quick on that, you don't wanna burn it. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my beautiful seafood mixture. So we've got clams, mussels, 
some crab, shrimp, scallops, and some calamari in there, which you can see. Nowadays, you can actually buy these seafood mixtures pre-prepared for you. So we've got this on full bore high. It's gonna take a minute for that to boil. This we can actually turn off. We have this nice and browned. And what I'm gonna do now is simply add all this beautiful rice on top. Normally your liquid is two to one on a rice dish, and it's the same here with paella, but you're really gonna be able to adjust it. This is gonna cook down, and it's actually gonna triple in volume by the time we get it out to the table. Wait till you see the pan I'm gonna be serving this in. It's probably about a 200 year old piece of copper that I think is just gonna be absolutely a showstopper. And we're gonna set this beautiful tray of paella into our oven. That's gonna be fantastic. And when I come back, we're gonna start our next course. See you soon. We're back and I can't think of anything that I love more than a good potato salad. And actually this memory is really pretty recent. I had a garden party probably about three or four years ago with a bunch of great friends in my backyard and I was just trying to do something different with potato salad. And what I, of course, like normal, it depends on whatever I find in the market that's fresh and exciting and also affordable, which is a good point when you're entertaining. You've always got to pay attention to the budget. It makes no sense to break the bank. If you're going to be uncomfortable, your guests are going to pick up on that. And the event is just simply not going to go as smooth as you'd like. So I found these fantastic tri-colored potatoes. Just your beautiful Yukon gold and this lovely, lovely purple potato. These are gorgeous, of course, just good red uh, wax potatoes, which are absolutely wonderful. And I thought, how fun would that be to actually make a tri-colored potato salad? And it actually worked. So I'm going to teach you a little bit more about it today. So it really is a roasted garlic and roasted tri-colored potato salad. All right, it's got some great flavors in it. So we have, again, our marinated artichoke hearts. I love these. I use them in so many things. Some chopped up uh, diced onion, very simple. Sun-dried tomatoes in the oil right out of the jar. It's real easy. Go to the store and pick up a jar. There's no prep. And of course, what would potato salad be without mayonnaise, all right? I've got a lot of best friends, but the truth is, this is absolutely my best friend. It goes in everything. And then for a great, beautiful taste, capers. Capers from the Mediterranean, which come from the caper berry, and they're beautiful, they're brine, they're in vinegar. I remember actually being in Greece years ago, walking through the alleyways of Mykonos and seeing these incredible caper bushes. They had these long white blooms that I had no idea what they were. They're just gorgeous. And that's exactly what the caper berry blooms into. It blooms into a flower where we are gonna make these capers bloom into the most amazing flavor in this potato salad. Okay, so we've got our herbs de Provence, some red chili flakes. Everybody's got those in their kitchen if you don't buy now. Roasted garlic, cut off the top, put it in the oven, wrap it up, 200 for about two hours, you have roasted garlic, cayenne pepper, and of course, our absolute perfectly beautiful fresh basil. Now the basil is gonna go on at the very last minute because the second you cut that, it's gonna turn brown. So right before it goes to the table is when we're gonna add the basil. So we're gonna start bite-sized pieces on these small potatoes. So that's a little too big for a fork, but that'll work. I'm also just gonna toss these right into a bowl as we go because we're gonna be roasting these in the oven. I love putting all these potatoes together. Who knew there was a purple potato? It's absolutely fantastic. I have a good friend of mine from the East Coast and I think the guy was raised entirely on potatoes and cabbage and it's always fun to cook for him because he's so excited to get a different kind of potato. But you know, nowadays the stores are filled with choices and ask your produce manager. They've got great different options that are available. Here comes this beautiful red. Look at that. That is a potato. Wow. I'm even excited. That is going to be great. My guests are going to go nuts when they have purple potatoes that they're eating from. We're just quartering those up. How simple could that be, right? A knife and a potato. Let me tell you about this knife, by the way. You know how I'm always cooking with something that's from somebody? This is my granddaddy Carl's knife. And when he died, I got into that kitchen, and this is the only thing I got. See all the nicks and the marks in that? I love cooking with his knife. It reminds me of him every single day. So if you've got something special in your house, use it. He's with me every time I cook. This crazy old dull knife, I could care less. I love it, and so should you. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're now gonna add our olive oil. We've got our potatoes in the bowl, and we're going to put our herbs in there. 
our chili flakes, very simply, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and put in all of our onions. We'll toss those around. And we could hit this with a little bit of salt, not a whole lot right now, a little bit of cracked pepper. And I can see right now that's gonna need more olive oil. What you're really trying to do here is dress these potatoes. And it makes it so simple. You didn't have to do it, just toss them around a little bit, give them a shake, turn them in the bowl. Okay, so then we're gonna add our red chili flakes, peppercino, if you don't have them in your house, you've got to. Our herbs of Provence, simple and easy. And more olive oil. We wanna dress this. We're trying to actually marinate these because we're gonna roast them. And then I'm gonna even kick it up a little bit more, some beautiful cayenne. Watch the spice. You know, if the guests don't like it, they'll eat around it. The best way to do this is get it in a nice big bowl, give it a big flip, it's great. And it's as simple as just simply pouring out your ingredients onto a cookie sheet. So these are ready to pop into the oven. Let's get these in. Same temperature as the paella, there it is. Smells great. We're gonna just pop that in there. Come back in just a second and we'll start the cold ingredients. I'll be right back. All right, I smell those potatoes. That garlic is really coming through. So let's see how they're doing. Oh, they look fantastic. They look beautiful. Look at those coming out. Roasted potatoes and onions. We're just gonna take these over here, let them sit. You'll need to want, let this cool a little bit, but I'm gonna move ahead just so that you can see how easy it works. Grab a spatula, hot pad or a towel. I always work with a towel. And we're simply gonna put our roasted potatoes into a big mixing bowl. Real simply, I'm gonna start with my sun-dried tomatoes. Be really generous. This is all about the color. Look at that, isn't that incredible? And then, let's go with the artichoke hearts next. These are our marinated artichokes right from the jar, any local store, available, readily available year round, and they just bring such a taste of flavor and freshness to a heavy salad like this. And now, I said we're gonna kick this up with these beautiful, absolutely fantastic caper berries. Wonderful. People are gonna say, what's that flavor? What am I biting in there? And they're gonna be capers. That'd be a little surprise. You can talk about that at the table. And of course, my best friend and every good red-blooded Americans is the mayonnaise. Not as much as you think, but potatoes really will absorb the flavor. And in fact, we're gonna talk just a little bit about the salt right here. I'm gonna go ahead and salt these, but you're gonna to need to correct this because this will need to refrigerate for a few hours and those potatoes are gonna absorb a lot of these seasonings. You'll wanna to toss it and taste it. I'm gonna add a few more of our green herbs right on the top. And actually, we have all our ingredients and I want you to use a very wide spatula or a spoon. And the reason why is I don't want you to break up these chunks. This is not mashed roasted potato salad. This is a chunky, full-bodied, bite in your mouth, all right? So don't over stir, kind of just absolutely hold it. You see how I'm doing that? I'm coming in from one side and over on the next. Hold it and you can see they look beautiful. We're gonna sprinkle with the beautiful pinoles, the pine nuts, get a handful of those. And the last thing is take those roasted garlics and just squeeze those beautiful roasted garlics, two of them, three, whatever you like, just right out of the shells. Look at that. Ah, oh, that is fun, isn't it? It's like playing with clay in the first grade, but you get to eat it. Of course, I always ate the clay anyways, but uh, they never quite told me what I could and couldn't do. One more time with the garlic in, big swirls, don't break up the pieces, and we're done. What we're gonna do now is just put a cover on this. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator. This is fantastic to make the day ahead and two days ahead, whatever works for your planning schedule. Everybody's coming this afternoon, so about three or four hours chilling will do it perfectly, and then we'll have this back and I'll show you exactly how we're gonna bring it out to our guests. So before then, go ahead, take it out, pop it into your fridge where you have everything else ready, and we're gonna be set. So I've just taken our wonderful roasted potato salad out of the uh, refrigerator and I'm just filling it up into my service bowl. It's gonna go back into the refrigerator for right now. But I just wanted to show you now, pile it high because that looks abundant. That looks welcoming. That is how we entertain people. A couple sprigs of the fresh basil. Wow, that just sounds incredible. And we'll just top it with more of the pepper flakes. I always like to put the herb or the spice on top that's actually inside so people have just a little idea of what's there. I've given it a quick taste test and it needs just a little bit more salt. We'll sprinkle it on that. And in fact, there it is, our roasted garlic potato salad with capers. 
well, talk about from a memory. This next dish comes from a memory, and it was from a memory of working really hard for World Relics. I was uh, in Italy looking for great pieces to bring to the warehouse, and in fact, it was about 105 degrees. I'll never forget the heat. There was no place to get out of the heat, and I don't speak a word of Italian, so I was absolutely out of luck. Well, I ended up in this little cafe, instantly ordered an ice cold Pellegrino, and uh, started off with that wonderful bubbling water, and then they brought me this fantastic bean salad. It was ice cold and chilled and it had all these great flavors and they served it just on the side. And then eventually they brought me some bread and it was like a tapenade and it was really, it's so simple. I had to find out what they did so I started asking questions and then came home and experimented with a few things. It's really very, very simple. So we're making a cold bean herb salad that can be used just as a side dish for any al fresco afternoon that you may have. It's as simple as three cans of beans. The first one will be white beans. They're called different things throughout the country. We're just going to open them up, buy them at the store. Now you'll want to drain at least two of these off, so I'm going to drain the liquid off of these. You see there's not much in there. And right into our bowl is going to go our first can of beans. And our second one is a black-eyed pea, a good old American black-eyed pea, which are actually quite readily available throughout most of Europe. Drain that off. I don't know why, but the black eyes always have more juice. We're gonna put a can of those in there. And then our next one is simply gonna be our garbanzo beans, or chickpeas. Again, it just depends on where you're from. I remember being, uh, I'm actually not from the South, but my mother was and my grandparents were, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the juice on this. And we always had black eyed peas on everything, hot, cold, you name it, it was great. It's very simple. We're just gonna take these, stir it up, give it a nice mix to make sure it's even. And we're gonna add some dark balsamic, just about that much. Some lovely red wine vinegar. That's gonna add the acid that we want. And we'll go ahead with kosher salts just fine. Just a nice white salt. And a couple twists of freshly ground pepper. And the last thing is our Italian herbs. You can find this blend in any store. Uh, just get an Italian seasoning mix. This is really what is gonna flavor with those green, beautiful, beautiful herbs from Italy. One more mix and we're ready to go. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and I'll be back shortly to show you how it goes to the table. Well, we're well underway and coming to the close of our al fresco lunch. One of the last things is gonna be a welcome appetizer, and I'm gonna do this incredible baked goat cheese roof tile. We have Niçoise olives right here, a mixture of greens and darks and wine drenched and vinegared and marinated olives right here. And then we have some wonderful Greek olives which have the pits out, so it makes it a little bit easier. Just some beautiful goat cheese that can come from any local supermarket, your trader store, whatever, some butter, and some artichoke hearts. This will knock your guest out. So you know that I'm always digging around, finding old things and doing, coming up with things to work with. We're gonna serve this and bake it in a roof tile from Provence. How fun will that be? You wanna clean it really well. We have these down at World Relics. Grab yourself a cooking spray and spray that tile. Remember, clean it well. It's a couple hundred years old, okay? We want everything healthy for our guest. It is as simple as taking our ingredients, these beautiful blocks of cheese. It's all gonna get cooked, so you don't really have to worry about how it goes in. Pile that up. This is the fun part. Take the butter in your hands. Oh, that is fantastic. And just slather the butter on the cheese. That's all you have to do. You know, um, years ago, I went to school in Tucson, Arizona, and I had what I was called my first family, Bill and Jeanette. And uh, I, they were kind of a host family when I was just getting started in life. And um, I remember Jeanette's uh, entertaining and cooking and she took me to this fantastic Mexican restaurant in Tucson where their first course was a baked cheese. I had never tasted anything like it. It was broiled, it was bubbly, it was crispy around the edges, and it just was stringy and luscious, and it was just an amazing flavor. It was actually from Mexico City, and that was 20 some years ago, and so I've been baking cheeses ever since then. And today, because we're al fresco and we're outdoor, I wanna have the feel again of Europa and Italy, and so we're gonna be using this fantastic vessel in our cheeses. It's real simple. All we're going to do is sprinkle some, we'll start with some of these little ones here. We're going to reserve some of these for later because we want them to look really nice and fresh as well. So we're going to put about half of our olives 
of each kind. There goes our mixture. In comes our pitted. And just kind of set them down in the arrangement. We'll reserve about half of those. And again, half of our niçoise. Wow, that's just amazing. Then just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and put these fantastic artichoke hearts full. Just got at my local grocery store and we're done. Oh my gosh, never forget the salt. Salt that cheese, all right. That's it, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. Gotta have the salt, love the salt. It's going in your oven, that's right. An antique roof tile is gonna go in the oven and my guests are gonna be here shortly. We're gonna start right here. Wait till you see that goat cheese come out of the oven. Tune in next time on Entertaining People as we finish our menu and greet our guest. You won't wanna miss this.